Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Um, I wanted to make this video today because the weather is finally getting cold and one of my favorite things about cold weather and one of my favorite things to buy when winter comes along are coats. I have so many coats. I have them all over here um, which is why I'm looking in this direction but I have so many coats and I try not to add coats to my wardrobe um, every time winter rolls around but I don't know, I just seem to buy like a new coat every winter and um, I wanted to make this video because coats are can be very very expensive um, or at least it can be like one of the pricier items for like a cold weather wardrobe so typically if you're going to spend money on a coat you want to make sure that it lasts for a very long time so you can get the best value for your money. Over the years through all of the coats that I've uh, purchased um, I've definitely come up with a list of a few things that really make a difference when you're buying a coat. So the things that I'm going to be going over in this video today are, are style, fit, length, color, and details. Alright, so I'm just going to jump right into the tips that I have for you guys on how to buy the perfect investment coat for the winter. Okay, so first up, let's talk about style. There are so many different styles of coats out there. Zipper coats, car coats, single breasted coats, double breasted coats, um, coats that don't have any buttons at all. There's just, by far, I think the easiest type of coat to wear are coats that um, are either single breasted and I lump into that category coats that zipper um, or coats that have no closures on the front and they just kind of drape or hang open. So first let's talk about the um, single breasted zipper type of coat. They're extremely flattering on a wide range of different body types and body styles and you can easily dress this kind of a coat up or down. Um, and you don't have to put too much thought in it. With double breasted coats, they can sometimes look a bit stuffy, sometimes look a bit formal, um, and they may not always be the easiest to dress down. I feel like double breasted coats are definitely on the more dressier side of the coats. Now, equally as good as zippered or single breasted coats are coats that just kind of hang or drape open. These ones are actually my favorite types of coats to wear, even more so than the single breasted or the zippered coat. I love the open drape coat because they look very minimalistic, very simple, but still very sleek and chic at the same time. Um, even though they don't have any closures on the front, I still find that they look really great both um, at the office and for the weekend. So I absolutely love this kind of a coat the best. And I'm going to show you guys two outfits here with the open drape type of coat. And you can see that it works really beautifully with either type of outfit. Fit is such an important factor when it comes to coats, and I think that fit really does truly make or break a coat. I think the two biggest factors for finding a good investment coat is fit as well as length. So for fit of the coat, you want to find something that isn't too tight and isn't too loose. And of course, you know, that's always the case with everything is trying to find like that perfect balance between the two. And the trick that I like to use with this, I like to buy one size larger than what I would normally buy. In the winter, you might want to layer under your coat so you've got, you know, like a shirt on, a sweater, maybe even a vest if you live somewhere very, very cold, um, and then you've got your coat. So if you buy the perfect size for your coat, it's going to look very tight when you have everything on and it's not going to look that good. For all of the photos that you see on like Instagram or Pinterest for winter outfits or outfits with coats, the one thing you'll notice is that all of the coats look like they hang and drape very effortlessly and that's because they're not too tight and not too loose. I would actually err on the side of going a little bit looser rather than a little bit more fitted for coats. The other thing is that if you look for a coat that generally has a straighter silhouette, typically these kind of coats are a little bit more relaxed to begin with so there's less of a chance that you'll end up with a straight coat that's too tight. Now the other thing that I'm going to talk about here is the fit of the arm and I'm going to talk about this here because it also kind of has to do with fit um, and a little bit with length which I'll talk about next but the fit and the length of the arm is also very very important for a coat and this is something that most people don't recognize right off the bat but um, if you buy a coat where the arms are extremely loose or extremely baggy or extremely long, um, the coat is just going to look completely off. Even if you have the perfect fit, you know, the perfect length, 
Um, everything else looks great about the coat. The arm does not fit well. Your coat is just not gonna look like it fits at all. So the things that you wanna look for in terms of the arm fit and length is you wanna look for something that's more on the fitted side, not super, super loose. And the reason for this is because you're already buying a coat that's a little bit more relaxed, a little bit bigger to give you enough room to layer underneath. So you don't want your arms to also be extremely big, baggy, and loose. You want something that's a little bit more fitted on the arm just to give you some definition and shape and structure um, to an otherwise more relaxed styled coat. With arm length, you want to make sure that you get something where the shoulder matches up right to your shoulder. Drop shoulder coats have been a lot more popular recently, but I think those ones are a lot harder to wear, especially if you are on the shorter side. If you find a coat where the shoulder fits perfectly, that is already a very important part of the arm fit. In terms of the arm length, you want to find something that hits at the wrist or right above the wrist. Anything shorter than, you know, slightly above your wrist bone is too short and anything longer than your wrist will really look a little bit too long. If you have a little bit of extra length, it's okay. What you can do is you can kind of scrunch your coat sleeve up a little bit, have whatever you're wearing underneath, like a sweater sleeve or shirt sleeve, peeking out a little bit. That's also very stylish as well. So if you do find a coat where everything fits really well, but the sleeves just are a tad long, um, don't worry, that's, that's definitely an easy fix for the tailor. Go ahead and invest in the coat anyways and you know, just get the sleeve shortened. You wanna try to avoid taking a coat to a tailor because coats can be very difficult to alter, so it can be an extremely expensive tailor trip, but if it's just shortening the sleeve, um, it shouldn't be too bad. All right, so now let's talk about the length of the coat. So um, like I mentioned, I feel like the two most important factors for coats are fit and length. Um, so with regards to length of a coat, you'll see that almost all of the coats that I show in this video today, except for one, tend to be on the slightly longer side. So they will usually come up right above my knees or at least mid thigh. And the reason why I absolutely love this length is because I think it's extremely flattering on any height. So I'm about five foot two, but you'll see that, that the length of these coats don't look too long on me at all. They don't make me look short. They don't overpower my frame. I think they just look very flattering and I actually feel like it makes me look taller. The other reason why I love coats that come right above the knee or mid thigh is because these kind of coats look extremely classy and these coats can be dr very easily dressed both up and down. Sometimes with shorter coats, it's, it's harder to wear them to, for example, like a, a wedding or a holiday party because they just don't really look formal enough. But with these coats that kind of fall in the middle of your thigh, um, you can, you know, they truly are very versatile and you can wear them to almost any occasion. If you're looking for a coat that's a little bit more formal, um, go with a coat that's longer. And if you want a coat that's a little bit more casual, then go with a coat that's shorter. So that's kind of my general way about how I remember what kind of length of coat is the best. So shorter is casual, longer is formal, and the kind that I love, which are right in the middle, which are which are right in the middle, either a little bit above the knee or mid thigh. That one is right between the super casual and the super formal. So I like to remember that as the perfect length, which works for both casual day to day, as well as um, your more fancy events and, and professional office attire. All right guys, so now let's talk about the color of the coat. I think this part is probably a no brainer for a lot of you. Um, if Of course, if you're just investing or one or two coats, you want to pick a color that's more on the neutral side. So either black, camel, um, ivory, navy blue, those colors will carry you a long way in terms of the versatility of the coat. Um, my preference is actually not for a black coat. If you could just have one color coat in your closet, I would definitely make that either a camel coat or a light gray coat, depending on if your wardrobe tends to lean towards the warmer side of things or the cooler side of things. So if you have a lot of warm tone colors in your closet, um, you know, like beiges, burgundies, um, browns, I would say go with the camel coat. If you wear a lot of black, white, um, gray, then go with the gray coat. And the reason is because gray coat is on the cooler side of things. It's going to complement your wardrobe very, very well. And the camel coat is on the warmer side of things. So it'll complement a warmer wardrobe very, very well. So um, that's my recommendation in terms of coat colors. All right, guys. So the very last topic here in terms of coats is details. So in terms of the details of a coat, 
you if you want your coat to be one that lasts you for years and something that looks very classic then go for more classic details and classic details are things like toggle buttons. some other really classic details are like military buttons so those look great on pea coats they also look really great on single breasted coats or double breasted coats and especially if you get one with some gold military buttons those ones look very nice and can really easily dress up an outfit because it just adds like a little bit of um, shine and metal to your outfit without overdoing it. Another detail that I absolutely love can also elevate the look of an outfit is the material of the coat. And one type of material in particular that I really love is a tweed. So tweed coats I think just looked so classic, so feminine, very Chanel-esque. And they just instantly add like luxury and class to your look. The coat that I have here is in an all black tweed and I absolutely love this coat to death because it's very classic very neutral colored but it still has a little bit of something extra with the sparkly lining and then the tweed fabric so and it's just super pretty and super feminine so I often try to stay away from printed coats because they're a lot harder to wear and um, I just I don't think they're quite as versatile as solid colored coats are if you are looking for a coat with some sort of pattern or print um, I would highly recommend something very classic like houndstooth um, or like a window pane print like the one that I have here. Window pane and houndstooth prints tend to be a lot more easy to match with things because the window pane print is relatively simple. It's not super loud and so if you're wearing a lot of solid colors it can add a little bit of interest to your outfit. And houndstooth is just very very classic and typically for houndstooth it comes in neutral colors anyways so it's very easy to pair. And also when it comes around to like fall and winter you do see a lot of houndstooth and plaid anyways so it's definitely like a winter print. All right guys, so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found some of these tips helpful for your next um, coat that you're looking into buying or investing in. Leave me a comment below and let me know what's the top thing that you look for when you're buying a coat. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. That way I know you like these types of videos and so I'll keep creating more of them. And um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do subscribe. I post videos every single week about fashion, life, and luxury. All of the coats that I showed in today's video are from um, past seasons. Um, I've definitely invested in these coats and they st they've stayed with me for a very, very long time. So I don't think, I'm not gonna be able to provide the exact links to these coats, but I will find coats that are extremely similar to the ones that I've shown here today. Um, I will also link my blog and my Instagram down in the info box below. All right guys, thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.